Welcome back to Module 2. I'm Dean Schillinger, a primary care physician at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. Today, we are talking about optimizing care for diabetes patients with limited health literacy. This is Part 2 of Module 2. Please remember this conceptual framework as we review how limited health literacy can affect communication in the clinical encounter. To do this, I will provide you with my first recommendation for improving communication in the clinical encounter, and that is, in the explanatory domain in particular, eliminating medical jargon. As my colleague Terry Davis in Louisiana likes to say, use living room language with your patients. That is, the kinds of language you would use in your family's living room when talking about health problems. Now, many of you, of course, watch medical shows, and one of the most appealing things about medical shows is how doctors and nurses seem to throw around technical words that make the show much more interesting. The question we asked here is, do, in this case, primary care doctors use medical jargon with their patients who have diabetes? Surprisingly, this question had never been asked and answered before. We audio taped over 70 clinical encounters between primary care doctors and their patients with type 2 diabetes. And we heard all kinds of jargon coming from the mouths of primary care doctors. They fell into two large categories. Jargon in which the clinician did not clarify the term, so just threw out the term under the assumption that the patient understood the word, and times when the clinician used a jargon term but clarified it and explained it to the patient. So an example here might be, um, it looks like your glucometer isn't working, unclarified. Another example might be, oh, that chest pain that you have when you're walking up the stairs, Ms. Jones, that's what we call angina. So we were most interested in understanding whether clinicians used unclarified jargon in their visits. The first thing we did is assess when unclarified jargon was used in the clinical encounter. Let me point out that medication terms like benazapril or metformin we excluded from our analysis because there is no other way to communicate these terms other than by using the pharmaceutical name. The first thing we notice is that clinicians uh, tend to use medical jargon when they are teaching the patient. For example, when they are providing recommendations or when they are providing health education. This puzzled me a little bit. Why would we be using medical terms when we're trying to teach our patients? And I've come to the conclusion that this is because we've never been taught how to explain health issues in living room language to our patients. Rather, we parrot the ways in which we learned about microvascular complications and kidney disease when we talk to our patients about their kidney disease. So we've identified that jargon is not infrequently used in an unclarified manner with patients with diabetes. The next question becomes, fine, do these patients understand the words that we seem to be using over and over again over the years? And when I've talked to my colleagues, first they say, well, first of all, I don't use those terms in my visit. We have now know that they do. And second, they say, well, I've been using this word for many, many years. My patient knows what a glucometer is. We've been talking about it forever. So we went back to these patients and called them a few weeks after their visit and asked them and their colleagues, similar patients with diabetes, if they understood what a particular word meant. And we gave them the entire context of the paragraph in which the physician, in this case, was communicating. An example here is the word dialysis. Here is an excerpt of a conversation in which the primary care doctor was attempting to praise the patient whose blood sugar and blood pressure were in excellent control and that she would not likely have kidney complications. The way she communicated this to the patient was by putting her arm around her shoulder and saying, do you know what the number one cause for people in this country being on dialysis is? Diabetes, and you're never gonna need to be on dialysis. So a very well-meaning statement, but the question is, did the patient understand? So we called this patient and patients like her and asked the question, would you please tell me in your own words what dialysis means? Here a score of one means no understanding and a score of four means total understanding. First patient says, check something every day, presumably thinking dialysis was something like diurnal or daily, so that's not correct. What is that about your toes? 
it means your diabetes is going worse and that you have to exercise to make diabetes. So here the patient actually not only didn't understand it, but understood the opposite to be true, that his diabetes was going worse. This woman said, you got to get on a machine to pump and redo blood to come up to par. Absolutely correct. Score of four. So as you can see, there's tremendous variation in the degree to which patients with diabetes understand the word dialysis. And you can understand why this might not be understandable by patients with diabetes unless they happen to have seen a television show about dialysis or if their auntie was on dialysis. We were interested in examining whether the kind of jargon and the setting in which the jargon was presented was associated with better understanding. So on the y-axis here, we have the proportion of patients who scored a three or four on a given word as having some or total understanding. And here we have, when we presented unclarified jargon, unclarified jargon from the patient's own visit, or clarified jargon. And we presented it in different ways, asking them to self-report their understanding, uh, asking us to assess their understanding, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The bottom line is, in no circumstance was the patient's understanding ever exceeding 40%. In no circumstance, even if it was the patient's own visit and even if the clinician clarified the term. Now, this was puzzling to me because I couldn't understand how is it possible that I could say, I want you to go get a new glucometer. That's the blood, the, the machine to check your blood for its sugar. Why would that not increase the patient's understanding of the term glucometer? And I was reminded of a problem I have, for example, with my computer when my laptop isn't working and I bring it to my IT guy and I say my computer's not working and then he starts talking to me about the motherboard and the SQL server and all of these things and he starts explaining to me in his jargon and I just tune out. I just want the computer fixed. So I think when we use these words, our patients essentially tune out and any subsequent explanation is not heard or integrated. So the bottom line is, Eliminate jargon and use living room language. That's recommendation number one.